We're changing the way the world communicates, um, and in particular how it communicates mobily. The internet over satellites is something that's actually been possible for a while, but has been very expensive. Um, and it's been expensive for a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is that if you wanted to use that mobily, which is principally why you would want to have uh, internet over a wireless signal, you're using very low frequency satellite signals and you're paying outrageous amounts. In fact, if you use those same satellites today, you're still paying outrageous amounts, something on the order of, of 20 euro per megabyte. Um, and so that can change as you go to higher frequencies, and those frequencies have typically been used for service like direct-to-home television. Um, but once you, once you change that and you start to use those satellites to provide internet access, um, the, the world opens up. And what's happening now is that those satellites are becoming more and more powerful as they leverage some of the same techniques that have been learned um, for, uh, for cellular connectivity. Um, and so two principal things. One is that they're starting to use smaller and smaller what are called spot beams. Uh, that's something akin to, say, uh, a cell in a cell site. So the smaller you get, the more spectral reuse uh, happens. But the other and maybe even more exciting thing that's happening is people are beginning to launch what are called non-geosynchronous satellites. So before I tell you what non-geosynchronous satellites are, I'll tell you what geosynchronous satellites are. Most of the communication satellites today are put 30,000 kilometers away from the Earth, where they orbit the Earth at the same rate that the Earth actually turns. Because of that, they appear to be fixed in the sky. Um, that's very far away and, and relatively expensive to access. If you put them closer, you can actually get better signal strength and you can get uh, much better coverage. But there's a problem. They move across the sky, which means that suddenly you need to have a dish tracking them. Um, our products will be the very first ones that can actually do that at a consumer price point with no moving parts whatsoever. It's a very different way of even thinking about antenna design. It's not something that's been done before. Uh, so in the case of Chimera, not only are we approaching the antenna design in a completely new way, uh, but then the use of liquid crystal technologies is something that hasn't been done in microwave technologies uh, very much at all either. And so this will be the first time that that's been commercialized. Right now, um, if you want to communicate with, uh, let's say, a satellite, you put out one of these big dishes that focuses the, the, uh, the signal down to a single point so that you can receive it. And what we've done is we've replaced that with a flat surface that we can actually produce using liquid crystal display technologies. And that surface can actually be pointed electronically to pick up a signal in any direction. What that does is it takes everything that we do with satellites today for fixed service like television and internet access and makes it possible to make that mobile. And the reason that that's important is that most of the world's wireless spectrum is actually locked away in those satellite assets. And so if you really count it up, it's almost 5,000 times more capacity available via satellite than is available on the terrestrial wireless networks that we use today. Um, but it's only used for fixed services principally right now. And so this will be the first time in many applications that it becomes mobile. Um, needless to say, that's very interesting to a number of people uh, in different industries. So we work with people in the shipping industry, aeronautical industry, uh, rail industry, and, and even uh, a small company in Japan that makes cars called Toyota. <laughs> and just to, just, to, just to pick on that one as an interesting use case, uh, Toyota has a tremendous challenge as they move forward with being able to improve the software in their cars, which is increasingly something that dominates the cost of the car and the reliability of the car. Um, also, they're looking forward to more and more autonomy in their vehicles and have a desperate need to be able to update things like maps. Uh, at very high resolution and very large uh, data sizes. But they don't have a good way to get that into the car right now. It's very expensive to do terrestrially. Uh, where there even is terrestrial uh, coverage. And, and I think it's important to remember that many of these firms are global companies. And so it needs to work as well in Africa as it does in Germany. Um, and then that's followed on by concerns about security. So satellite is one of the most secure ways to actually get this information to the ground because there's uh, um, a choke point in the actual satellite itself. You have physical access to the signal. Already, a number of companies are exploring the use of these non-geosynchronous satellites as ways to get 
very cost-effective capacity into space. And these aren't small companies. These are companies like Airbus and Intelsat, uh, working in partnership with a company called OneWeb. Uh, SpaceX has also announced plans to launch their own constellation. And a number of other companies that haven't announced yet, but are uh, beginning to plan and talking to us about what they need uh, to, to get access to the satellites. Um, what's really exciting about that is, in many cases, for the first time, you'll have low latency, high capacity coverage in areas that just don't have it today. Um, and so in large parts of Africa, large parts of India, a great deal of Asia, there simply is no internet access today, period. Uh, and so to think about that, essentially falling um, almost free from the sky is very exciting. But you have to have the right technology on the ground to catch it.